Hello, welcome back to another episode of Hildebrand Adventures. We shall continue from where we left off with uh, Seer in the back here. The GG situation. Seer must once more enter into a world he does not quite understand. I pray this day finds you well, Ryan, or at least better than it finds me. It seems I have no choice but to seek out that inspector and convince him to surrender up his mammoth to me. Something wrong with the mammoth? T'was unearthed under most suspicious circumstances after all, and who can say what secrets or heresy it might hold? Therefore, the Inquisition would conduct a thorough inspection and see if needs must destroy it. Given his affinity for the contraption, I fear the inspector may not be amenable to my request. Nevertheless, we must be made to see that it is in the interest of public safety. Would you be willing to help me persuade him? Sure, I suppose. Fury be praised, at least you have seen reason. Let's pray he will as well. I am given to understand that while the inspector and his assistants have been wandering all over the city with the mammoth in tow, they often frequent the gazebo near Fort Tom's manor. With any luck, they will be there now. The gazebo again? Okay. I mean, fair because a uh, suspicious mammoth might have secrets. Okay, let's see. Last vigil. Oh, the gazebo here. Hey, Gigi. Hey, talk to Na Nashu instead. Isn't she adorable? I thought we agreed it's a he. Verily shall we scour all creation, from the deepest pit of the seven hells to the very pinnacle of the heavens, for the answers we seek. Every day shall be filled with grand adventures, the stuff of fairy tales and legends. Who are you teaching him? Huzzah! A grand adventure in the deepest pit of the seven hells. Yup, sounds about right. Just so. Such is the creed of Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire. Oh, he learned to flex like that too. That's cute. Well posed, Gigi. Well posed. I dare say you have the potential to be an exemplary inspector someday. Right. That's enough of that. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Supreme Sacred Tribunal of Halonic Inquisitory Doctrine, I hereby command you to surrender that mammoth of suspected heretical origin into my custody. Why, hello there, Ryan, an Inquisitor Seer. Ever the jester. Accusing poor Gigi of being a clockwork heretic when displaying to see that he is merely a precocious young lad. Oh, then you go again, confusing the poor girl, as if those big, beautiful, boxy eyes aren't the soul of femininity. Nashu, please, were you not witness to the magnificent display of Mandavillian masculinity mere moments ago? That's cause you haven't taught her any better. She needs a proper role model to show her what's what. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're having fun. <laughs> Master Ashenra, Inspector Seer, what is all this commotion? We can hear you from the courtyard. Oh, hello, Lord Edmond. Oh, Lord Edmond, my sincerest apologies for the disturbance. I am come to seize this mammoth on behalf of the Inquisition, a fact which I clearly explained to the inspector before you arrived. At which point they set to bickering about the contraption's gender. What say you, my lord? Do you think Gigi a boy or a girl? Is he seriously thinking about it? 
This is clearly a strapping young lad, no? Oh. <laughs> Fury take me, not you too. Has the whole world gone mad? Fine, fine. But even supposing that this Gigi is a real boy, you cannot deny that the circumstances of his discovery and miraculous resuscitation were most unusual. He cannot be suffered to roam the city with impunity until the Inquisition has determined he is not a threat. I beg your pardon? Miraculous resuscitation? Gobbert fixed him. Fixed it. Fixed it. I see. Then until such time as Shiji recovers his memory, mayhap it will be best if you adopt him as a ward of House Mandeville. I will even stand as witness here and now if you wish. <gasps> wow. Uh, adopt? Then that will make me... Gigi's father? <gasps> Doubtless the Inquisition would think better of taking any action which might threaten the cordial, cordial relationship between our two houses. Yes, yes, of course, I'll do it. Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, do hereby grant this child the patronage of House Mandeville. Papa Hildy! Papa Hildy! The inspector's finally become a father. <laughs> it's... it's so beautiful. Quite, ahem. Now that you need no longer fear the Inquisition, you are free to show Gigi more of our fair city. Indeed, I strongly encourage you to do so. Mayhap, by the grace of the Fury, something will jog his memory. Thank you, Lord Edmund. I will not forget this kindness. Come, my faithful assistance, my beloved son, we must away. Oh, poor seer. Oh, alone. I will not presume to question your grand design, but gah, confound it all. Well, mayhap I cannot detain the mammoth, but I'm still within my rights to observe the blasted thing. Yes? Lord Gobbert will be pleased to hear that his son is as hale and healthy as ever. Not that I will ever presume to meddle on another father's behalf, and certainly not without consent. That's sweet. This is taking turns in some interesting directions. Okay, where do we go now? Um, actually, just a little bit up here. Yeah. Wait. Oh, it's down there. God damn it. Can I jump down? I can. Now, Gigi, surely gazing upon this wondrous work of Ishgardian architecture stirs something within your soul. This grand manor of House Duran, uh, House Duran, pray do not fill the boy, the mammoth's head, with such nonsense. There's a supreme sacred tribunal of Hellenic inquisitory doctrine. I should know, I work there. Furthermore, I'm quite certain that there is no how Duran blah 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 and it is rather a ludicrous portmanteau of the four high houses, including that esteem house which but recently stood as witness to your adoption. Well, Gigi, do you remember anything? Nope. No, nothing. I say, rather than parading him before the Grand Joes, why not give him a taste of something more prosaic? Let us make our way to the holy stables that he might bask in the singular sights, sounds, and smells of Ishgard's famous chocobos. Hi, <sighs> poor seer. Oh, so that's the Inquisitor's office, okay. 
can I actually go in? <gasps> I can. I think I might have been here once or twice during Heaven's Ward quest line. Okay, to the Chocobo Stables we go, which is in the foundation. Here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here. Mm, no. Splendid specimens of horsebird flesh, would you not agree? In the hands of a skilled jockey, any one of them could take first place at the saucer. These chocobos are the pride of the Ishgarden cavalry, and any temple knight who dared exploit them for personal gain would answer to the fury herself. How about now, Gigi? Do you remember anything about Ishgard? Be sure to sniff the chocobos, it might help. <laughs> it didn't. You know, just because you found him in a Kortan snowbank, it doesn't mean he hails from Ishgard. True. Might be from Ulda. Black Mage Guild. I mean the, the Tomatouch Guild. Which is why we ought to try taking him to the markets and exposing him to all manner of goods from across Eosia. Excellent suggestion, Inquisitor. Wait, am I now complicit to this farce? Fury, forgive me. Just follow along. Like I do. I want one! I want one! Buy me a chocobo, please, father! Oh no. Huh? Father? That strange looking thing is staring at us. GG. GG. -g. Am I that strange looking? Oh, I see a reference to Vivi from Final Fantasy Nine. That's sad. Okay. Um, the pillars, the markets. I just realized that he might be a reference to Vivi, since his name is Gigi. Okay. Hmm? Why bother? It's no use. Now, now, Gigi, you must not give in to despair so easily. The I not promise you days filled with grand adventures and the eventual discovery of your mislaid memories? Spirits, Gigi! Spirits! Oh! <gasps> oh no! Oh. Heal Lebron! <laughs> My word! A vase flung to the ground with reckless abandon. Could this be the opening salvo of an indiscriminate campaign on vandalism? I think all of us here saw you accidentally knocking that over, Hildebrand. 
don't pretend you don't know. <laughs> Seriously. One waged by your wild gesticulations, perhaps. At least look before you strike a pose. The gods only know how much that vase cost. 123,504,000 gil at last assessment. Twas over 700 years old and graced the homes of a dozen archbishops, eight counts, two lord commanders, and one duke. Even I don't have a 100 million gil. <laughs> 100 million gil. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, alone. Why have you forsaken me? Oh? Gigi, can you do something? <gasps> well, would you look at that? What? Don't pretend that you did something, Hildibrand. It was Gigi, not you. It's it's a miracle, nay, the divine intervention of the Fury herself. The I do that? Gigi, my boy, that was marvelous. You're a born artisan, just like father. Papa, Hildes, Papa? Your grandpapa got the, the man who woke you with a few gentle taps to the noggin. You wouldn't believe what else he can do with the hammer of his. Why, some folks say he wields the very powers of life and death. Once he and the missus come back from their tour of the Western Highlands, I'm sure they'd love to see that trick of yours. Do not demean this mammoth's power as a mere parlor trick. We just witnessed a miracle and demand that you all acknowledge it. This mammoth? Sir, I say sir, 100 million gil for the mammoth. Nay, 100 million gil and the duke's priceless vase. My word, is this what passes for trade in Ishgard? Gigi is my flesh and blood. I will not sell him at any price. I don't think he is your flesh and blood, Hildy. Please, Papa Hildy, no more. I know you mean well, but we can deny the truth no longer. I am a mammoth. Gigi, whatever has gotten into you, you are my son. You are a Mandeville man. Listen to your papa, Gigi. You're a mandible girl through and through. Aw. Stop it, both of you. You're not my papa or my mama. Aw. Aw, Gigi. Well, it's only to be expected. Gigi is at the rebellious age. Strange as it may sound, I too tested my parents' patience and that on more than one occasion. But if they could weather the storm, then so can I. I say we find out what's got him thinking he's a mammoth. But he is a mammoth! How can you not? Oh, never mind. The measure of a mammoth Hildebrand knows in his heart that love transcends dimensions of time and space, definitions of man and machine. The course of fatherhood never did run smooth, but I, Hildebrand, guardian of Gigi, doting parent extraordinaire, shall find a way to overcome this trial and be reconciled with my beloved son. That's the spirit. Solving a simple case of childhood rebellion should be easy for a man who's unmasked thieves, defeated duelists, and led armies of the undead. Yes, yes, that's all very... wait. What was that about the undead? Actually, don't tell me. For now, all that matters is finding that mammoth. 
We should begin by speaking with the sentry stationed at the city gates and the airship landing. If Fury helpless, he has left Ishgard, we need to know about it sooner rather than later. I will visit the Ark of the Worthy while the inspector and his assistants head to the airship landing. You can question the guard at the gate near the manufactory, after which we will regroup there and share our findings. Dismiss! Okay, where to now? Um, in the foundation. Oh, near the Sky Steel Manufactory. Okay, okay. Got it. Okay, we are here at the Sky Steel Manufactory. This way. Have you seen a mammoth? Little fellow with a white brim hat, A. Eh? He came through here, bought passage on a supply ship bound for Falcon's Nest. One of them was named Lalafels, right? Funny little buggers. Seemed keen to be anywhere but here. Well, if Gigi left the city, it was not by the main gates. And the sentries at the airship landing have seen no one matching his de description. He came out through here. Falcon's nest? Fear will take me. Must we return to their freezing pit of despair? Wheresoever Gigi goes, I will follow him and find him and embrace him as my son once more. However, I surmise our final destination lies far beyond the walls of Saint Outpost. Indeed, there is but one reason he will return to those frozen wastes. To frolic in the snow and cast his worries to the winds. I don't think so, Hildy. Really? He seemed in no mood to frolic when I last saw him. As I recall, he used his arcane powers to mend a vase only to become morose and belligerent when it became clear to him that he was in fact a mammoth. One might even say he remembered what he was, remembered his purpose, and so he returned to the Western Quotas, that famous breeding ground for Hirsi, where first we found him. Uh, they're, they're so like... They're so focused into their own agenda, my god come to his heretic masters to share with him the intelligence he had gathered on the city. At long last, the undeniable, the unquestionable, the unmistakable scent of heresy. What are, we, what are we standing around for? We have a heretic to catch. <sighs> Inspector, I'm starting to think that Inquisitor Seer might not think very highly of our little girl. Now you notice? It is possible, but I will not presume to know his feelings ere he voiced them explicitly. Until such time as he does, we should endeavour to surreptitiously bring him round to the opinion that Gigi is a boy of pure heart and good intent. Subtlety in all things, Nashu, that is the Mandeville way. Okay. I like go through here to Fal Falcon's Nest. I don't think I ever try actually. Oh, here I am. I don't need to teleport. Um, where? Somewhere out there? Okay, just here. Footprints. Tiny, tiny, small footprints. Aha! I knew it. The mammoth immediately left the outpost and looks to have headed north along the river. By the fury, I cannot wait to finally catch him in the company of heretics. I don't much like your tone, Inquisitor. If our baby girl ran afoul of any heretics, she looked them square in the eye and tell them she doesn't want any. 
Hey, Inspector, I think I just had one of those moments, you know, of insight. Maybe Gigi came out here to find Lord Gobbert. I did tell her her grandpapa might like to see that trick of hers. Brilliant deduction, Nashu. We must be, he must be eager to meet his grandparents. The self-same ones he renounced when he declared you were not his father? Ha ha ha, what a fine young gentleman, eager to explore his heritage. Let us make haste, my friends, for a reunion of three generations of Mandelville's beckons. I really can't be bothered. Okay. Where to now? Okay, not too far over the side. Here, more footprints. The track continued to the north. Oh, Gigi, no. The mammoth lies motionless in the snow. Fragments of ice stuck to its cap, suggesting the impact of something small and round travelling at high speed. Oh, I see. Let's heal these parents! <laughs> Careful, my dear, that was a bit below my belt. Pow, right in the kisser. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my god, all these dead snowbucks, is it because of them? Ugh, my head, who? Oh, it's you. You follow me. Oh, Gigi, if you wanted to have a snowball fight with your grandparents, you should have said so earlier. Papa Hyoli was very worried, though he is glad to see that you are unharmed. It would seem he was struck by a snowball, much like these stain box, these dead stain box. Are you sure he isn't damaged? As if a mere blow to the head could fell our Gigi. We Mandelvilles are made of sterner stuff. I myself have been driven headfirst into the earth on no fewer than two dozen occasions, several times from mom's above, and my mind is no less brilliant for the experience. I'm not so sure. I expect the Earth was no less brilliant for the experience either. Why are you? Are you nodding? Oh, he's behind me, isn't it? <laughs> what good fortune to cross paths with you, Lord, so far from civilization. Forgive me for not taking notice earlier. I was engrossed in my duel with Julian, but how rude of me. Would you care to join us? Um, I think. I think best not. Grandpapa Godbert. Grandpapa Godbert. Mama Nashu says you wield the powers of life and death. I beg of you, Grandpapa Godbert. Grant me life. Make me a real boy. Oh, It's kind of sad. Are you sure about this, son? It may sting a little. Can you do it? I will endure whatever I must to become a real boy. <laughs> you scared now? Then let us begin. Huh? This body is everything I ever wanted. It's perfect. Thank you, Grandpapa Godbert. Thank you. I don't 
I still don't think you are a real boy. You just have a nicer body. Oh, but I have not even begun to begin. Baragod, guy in my hammer. Oh. <laughs> Did he do it? What? What? Um Papa Hildy, I'm I'm a Mandeville man. Um Gigi, my son, come to your father. Let me have a look at you. Um Oh what the hell? Papa Hildy. Gigi. Why is this slow mo running? Oh, there's a different pose. That is not the same pose. Um. Um. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> From different angles, no less. God. It's beautiful though. It's beautiful. <laughs> See, even he'll be agrees. <laughs> By God's God, but what did you do? You have made a Mandeville thing, I guess. Now that brings back some memories. Papa Hildy? Oh dear. Who who could have done such a thing? Who indeed? Oh? Oh. Only for a limited time. By the fury. It's just like the vase all over again, miraculously restored to its original form. Oh. Gigi, my boy, upon further consideration, I believe that this body may suit you best. It is, how shall I put it, more manageable. And much more adorable. I mean, the, the Lala film was not bad too. But how can I ever be accepted as your son if I remain a mammoth? Is that what's been troubling you all this time? But why didn't you say so? What? I was expecting some sort of touching moment, but not this. A mandible is more than mere flesh and bone. He is vigor, compassion, honor. A gentleman for all seasons. Be you man or machine, it makes no difference. If they call you a mammoth, you look them in the eye and say, Nay, I am a Mandeville mammoth. Yup. <laughs> you go, 
GG。Mother, father, forgive me for not consulting with you earlier, but circumstances forced my hand. I have formally adopted Gigi as my son and ward of House Mandeville. Ye gods, I knew he was fond of the mammoth, but did you hear that, woman? Our son's gone and got himself a son. Papa, grandpapa got the grandpapa got the. Ah. It all makes sense now. Grandpapa Gobert and Grandmama Julian. I've been waiting years to hear those words. Grandpapa Gobert, Grandmama Julian. Few things in life are grander than becoming a grandparent, as they say. Ha ha ha. Sure. How does Julian think about it, though? Um. What? Oh, inner beast, and what's so bloody grand about it? Oh, run, you two! <laughs> Did she not give chase? <laughs> she has the inner beast. I'll not be made grandmother to a bloody buggering mammoth. It's past time I beat some sense into my beloved boy. Go for it, Julian. Fairy, take me. I've heard the tales of dark nights before, but no, no, it couldn't be. No, I think it was something far worse. Heretical, like as not, but rules be damned. I'm not risking my life to find out. It's more scared of Julian than anything. She's very scary though. Ay, poor Seer. Oh, the skies are look nice now. They are mad, utterly mad, the whole damn lot of them. How their house could rise to such prominence, I will never understand. Well, at least the mammoth seems to have overcome its existential crisis. Before today, I didn't know a mammoth could even have an existential crisis. Wait, what am I saying? It's a mammoth. Why would I care? Why should I care what he claims to think or feel? Yeah. Fury, take me. Their idiocy is infectious. I mustn't allow myself to fall prey to it. Follow procedure. Report to your superior, one step at a time. One step at a time. Don't deny it, Seer. Yeah. Who, who are they? Are they the people who know Gigi? Maybe? Or are they the Inquisitors? They might be the Inquisitors. Okay, where to now? Find Seer in the foundation. Okay, okay. Okay. Is that another episode? The, the episode's a little bit shorter now. Right then. My superiors, having been informed of the mammoth's adoption by House Mandeville, as witnessed by House Plot Toms, proceeded to take me to task for my gross mi mishandling of the situation. Unfortunate. They remain convinced that the mammoth is a product of heretical machinations and have commanded me to redouble my efforts to prove this incontrovertible act fact that may prove problematic however as Gigi seems to have forsaken his quest to recover his memories and thrown himself wholly into his new life as a mandeville mammoth casting about any hint of a case alongside his doting father 
In any event, though I do not share my superior's conviction, I think it's safe to say there is something exceedingly unusual about that mammoth. You saw with your own eyes how effortlessly it's restored that vase and itself to its original form. Reconstructive magics are not particularly rare, but his are unlike any I have ever seen before. Hmm. Okay, more mystery. Oh? Yeah, <laughs> that's another episode. Why is Seer so sad his his picture? Oh <laughs> Julian. All right. Okay, that's it. That is another episode. So I will see you again in the next. Bye bye.